everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Desiree Marquez Santos. A little bit of background about me. I am a foreign medical graduate from the Philippines. So um, I graduated in 2014. Shortly after that, I worked as a general physician in my country for several years until 2017 when I immigrated to the United States. And I've been working in the medical field over the past four years. I've been working at a primary care clinic. In 22, I decided to pursue my US MLE, took my steps one and two, did my rotation, research about programs. And then I applied to family medicine programs this season. And I'm happy to say that I was offered the pre-match position. So very excited to start my residency this July. So um, today I am invited to talk about EMR. And um, is it important? Do we need it as we apply in residency? And my short answer to that is yes, absolutely. It is very important. And very briefly, I will talk to you about some of the reasons why I think it's very useful and important. Okay, so EMR. EMR stands for Electronic Medical Record, okay? And it has a variety of function, variety of uses. Okay, number one is for documentation. EMR serve as a digital platform where a provider can document everything about the patient. That would include the patient's history, uh, laboratory findings, physical exam findings, treatment plans, follow-up plans, etc. So in essence, it's like a comprehensive digital record of a patient care which it also helps in facilitating communication among the different members of the healthcare team. So that's number one. Second is information access and retrieval. So EMRs allow access for patient information, including results of blood work, imaging studies, and even past medical records. For example, when a patient is transferring care from one provider to another, EMRs make it easier for us to obtain their past records because everything can be retrieved electronically. We do not need to wait for actual physical copies before we can obtain all those. Then second, third is clinical decision-making support. EMRs also have certain tools and the features which assist physicians in, um, in, for, in giving informed decision when it comes to best patient care. I'll give you an example. When we're trying to prescribe something to a patient and there is a potential for a drug interaction or an allergy to that particular medication, the EMR would alert us of such. And so in essence, EMRs help promote safety by minimizing those kind of medication errors. Fourth is communication and coordination of care. I've already talked about that before. Um, it helps facilitate communication among all the different members of the team. That includes the primary care doctor, specialists, nurses, MAs, physical therapists, and every single part of the team. And finally, patient engagement. So um, EMRs also have this feature they call as patient portal wherein a patient can send messages to their provider. They can also schedule appointments. They can um, check the results of their blood work. And so in that way, I think EMRs help empower patients to be more proactive about their overall health care. Now, those are some of the things, and in no way are they exhaustive, but I think are some of the things why I think EMR is very important. But it's not enough to know that, it is even more important that we know how it works and how to use it. And so the way we do that is, of course, by obtaining U.S. clinical experience. And um, I'll end my part of the talk by saying that, especially nowadays, when it's getting extremely competitive to get into residency, it is of significant importance that we obtain U.S. clinical experience. Not only will it help you be more familiar with the system, but also it will help strengthen your overall profile, your overall application, and likewise will show that 
you're committed, you're willing to invest time and effort into learning, integrating knowledge, and understanding the healthcare system here in the United States. So, yeah, that's everything I wanted to share about the MR and the USCE. I so, hope you guys learned something. Th thank you, Desiree. A uh, couple of follow-up questions. Uh, mm -hmm. You did do a uh, tele-rotation uh, with Dr. Saad, if I'm not mistaken, right? In FM. Yes, I did. And, I did. I and that did. had a remote EMR? Did it have mm -hmm. a remote EMR? Yeah, so at that time, I didn't have an option. Well, I do have options, but I wasn't uh, physically able to do an in-person rotation. And good thing Sarty had an option for a tele-rotation. So that's what I did. I enrolled in a program in a tele-rotation. I did that for initially four weeks, but that extended to six weeks. And that was truly very helpful because, you know, I was really able to do direct patient care. I talk to the patients by myself. Um, it helped enhance my clinical decision making. Truly very helpful in my overall application. Yeah. Thank you. And and that is something, you know, I, I want all our uh, audience students to know that even in remote uh, or tele-rotations, there are uh, rotations where you can access EMR, manage the patient. So EMR access can be done remotely as well uh, through VPN. But uh, thank you. Thank you, Desiree. Uh, Aditya, over to you now. Aditya is also going to talk about EMR. So Aditya, why don't you start with your introduction and then we'll go from there. Okay. So hello, everyone. I am Aditya. I'm still a medical student in India. So I'll be graduating next month and I'm applying for the 2025 match. I'm done with my step one and my step two is also there in two months. So uh, I did one tele uh, since Desiree covered most of it, I'll be talking mostly about my experience. So I did one tele rotation with Dr. Saad and one uh, inpatient rotation in uh, Beaumont Hospital, Dearborn. So in both the hospitals, we had EMR access. And in Dr. Saad's clinic, uh, we had a remote access using Skype and a second screen where we were given the remote access. So in that, we had a chance to type our own notes in their format, which is SOAP uh, or the SOAP notes, which is Subjective Objective Assessment and Plan. So in that format, we were uh, given access. And then once we are done with the patient interaction, some any doctor would come and sign it off. So in that way, we would know the previous history or what dose of the medication was the patient taking earlier, any other past medical history, any surgical history, or any precautions we must take before prescribing the medication. And uh, since it was also an addiction medicine clinic, uh, the EMR had a very specific uh, access uh, for the, uh, what do you say, like the drugs such as buprenorphine, which are uh, not uh, prescribed over the counter. So uh, it's easier um, in a way to access that. And uh, since I'm not done with my interviews, uh, Desiree already covered about that. And in the inpatient rotation, uh, we were uh, given computers. We were given access from one of the preceptors. So uh, in the same way, we can access all the data. And I feel that is very important when you go and talk to the uh, patients in the hands-on rotation, which I did. So uh, the previous history is very important. And also you can uh, go through many tools which are there in the EMR, which are useful in prescribing and also watching out for any other problems. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.